we were discussing on screening and selection of the highest yielding uh, cell line. So, what methods can be used for selecting the highest yielding cell line can be active and passive techniques. So, uh, now coming on to the effect of other parameters like light. Now, light is a crucial parameter especially for plant cells. The light intensity which means the light quality, the photoperiodicity which means the light photoperiod cycle. Generally in in vitro cultures we keep 16 to 8 hours light dark cycle, well, but it may vary. People optimize photoperiodicity to complete 24 hour cycle even. When I say light quality what does it mean? Light intensity is one which is lux and wavelength of light. So, sometimes secondary metabolism is also found to be a function of the kind of light which means the wavelength of light. Sometimes in some of the secondary metabolites blue light uh, has been found to induce the production of a secondary metabolite. We will be discussing some of the examples. So, the behavior of culture is influenced by three things I said photoperiodicity, light quality and intensity. Now, promotory effects of light may possibly due to what? Because light might and in literature if you see he can play a role in activity and expression of enzymes. Activity of enzymes when getting affected can even lead to active transport of these nutrients, uptake of nutrients from the soil or the medium. So, now this can be an indirect correlation because some of these enzymes which are uh, responsible for active uptake ek are getting influenced, their expression can be getting influenced by the light photoperiodicity or light intensity or the kind of light or the wavelength. So, enhanced uptake of sucrose and nitrate has been reported in literature to be affected by the light. Now, I was saying an indirect effect, some of these might lead to generation of ATP, enhanced production of ATP which in turn may facilitate the active transport of the nutrients. The process being under the control of phytochromes. Now, these are certain kind of proteins, PR proteins which are generated, which are impacted by the light, which in turn may help in the transcription of the certain enzymes which may be responsible in the biosynthesis or induction of a particular secondary metabolite pathway. So, the process being under the control of phytochrome through mediation of increase in the intracellular level ATP also and if you will see literature they might be directly impacting the transcription process. So, contradictory effect of light on enhanced secondary metabolite production in the presence of light has also been observed where higher accumulation happens in dark. Now, if in nature sometimes a particular secondary metabolite is known to be synthesized in the underground parts. So, now getting synthesized in the underground parts the regulation might be with light. So, then if under in vitro conditions you will try to enhance the production you may observe that under complete dark conditions in your plant cell or other forms of in vitro cultures the secondary metabolite biosynthesis is found to be affected or regulated. So, some cues have to be obtained by how th and where the secondary metabolite is getting synthesized un under natural conditions. A temperature now coming on to temperature generally 25 degree plus minus 2 is what is found to be suitable for generally most of the species, but sometimes even a change in 2 degrees or 3 degrees makes a difference that is what we observed with Vaila Odorata. So, uh, there are plant growth chambers which are maintained at 23 and a plant growth chamber which is maintained at 25. But under 25 degree C you will find that they are they do not grow much, their growth rate gets affected. So, therefore, temperature and again how do you think the temperature can play a role in the growth as well as secondary metabolism? How does the temperature affect? 
Number of places of labor is slightly proportional to the proportions of the sun. Light is one. Temperature? Enzyme activity can get impacted or membrane composition, membrane fluidity, permeability can get impacted. So, there are different ways in which the temperature affects. Now, coming on to aeration and culture mixing, this is particularly important under in vitro conditions when you are working with in vitro cultures like hairy root cultures or uh, cell cultures and when is it more useful or more crucial when it is in under liquid culture conditions. Now, culture agitation and aeration these are said to be independent parameters. Now, agitation is what? It will facilitate like any other fermentation process, it will facilitate mixing is related to mass transfer homogeneity. So, not only of the, it will allow the cell to be suspended, does not allow it to settle down, again affecting the mass transfer. What else? You said homogeneity means all the uh, uh, media around is homogeneous in composition. Then mixing, everything is properly mixed means uniform conditions throughout. What else? In, in case of plant cells. Friability. Separate cells will be separate dispersing, dispersing, which means settling down. So, keeping them in suspension. Okay. The size of the bubbles. And in shake flask? There is no bubbling, is not it? No. So, then we can afford to stop, have a static shake flask. Cells keep on moving, uh, the cells which were on surface will come down and like that. Or the media. media Ultimately, the gas to the cells is through the media. So, uh, the transfer is facilitated if the media is, and how is the aeration taking place in a shake flask? Especially, it is a aeration through surface aeration. So, continuous circulation will facilitate the contact of the media with the air above. So, culture agitation and aeration are independent cultural components, they can get, they can impact the growth as well as secondary metabolite biosynthesis. Now, culture volume um, may have influence in oxygen absorption coefficient associated with the area of the culture medium. Culture volume, how does it impact? Which we also call as media to flask volume ratio. Because in turn it will impact the surface to volume ratio. The surface which is exposed to the air. So, RPM generally, although this is just a range. 90 to 120 rpm is if you see microbial fermentations it goes above 250 rpm, but in plant cell fermentations nearly less than 100 or around 100 to 150 crossing above 200 and so then how will you find that what rpm is the optimum. If I give you to plan an experiment that what agitation speed should be optimum how will you decide? Run it on different RPMs, uh, okay. same, all the culture conditions and experimental setup same and we will run it on different RPMs and whatever we are aiming to increase, we will check for it whether it uh, maximum, production. maximum time production. Now, why do you think there would be a change? What will get first impacted? The secondary metabolite biosynthesis or it is an intern response of something else. Yeah, because they are very sensitive. Not very sensitive. Yeah, but there can be detrimental shear forces with increase in RPM. Now, how will you then find or justify that this RPM? So, in turn, when you talk about shear forces or shear sensitivity uh, damage, how will you quantify that? Cell viability. What are the methods did we study? earlier for plant cell viability. Uh, uh, closer to that. TTC assay. So, you can use these assays to check the viability. So, percentage viability drop with the RPM and then find out 
because in turn it is the biomass productivity which will get affected and thereby your product productivity. So, the first would be indication would be your biomass productivity and you see your viability. Okay, what else do you think apart from oxygen can also get impacted by this media flask volume ratio or your RPM? There are other gaseous components like CO2 or volatile components which act as growth regulators, especially in plant cell fermentations like ethylene. So, now how if there is too less or too much of rotation, then this may lead to escape of these volatile components which may be needed for the plant growth regulation. Now, pH generally plant cells they prefer a little slight acidic pH which ranges between 5 to 6. So, the pH when you maintain irrespective of the species one has to see that it uh, between 5 to 6 they are quite sensitive eh, which one is the optimum pH. Now, how do you think the pH impacts the growth enzyme activity is crucially getting impacted by the surrounding pH of the medium. So, media with undefined organic components are usually buffered. So, when we use generally media, media is well defined which is called as the defined composition, but when we use complex substrates, so there is batch to batch. So, because breaking them down for example, your yeast extract or your peptone or casein hydrolysate, these are complex substrates. So, now when you use such kind of complex substances, then your pH might get affected. So, then you generally have a buffering agent. So, what are the most common buffering uh, salts which are used in media? GH2. Fermentation media? potassium dihydrogen phosphate. So, your inoculum and pre-culture is also one of the significant factors which impacts the growth and secondary metabolite productivity. Now, size generally when you optimize inoculum, you optimize inoculum age, you optimize inoculum size. So, when I say inoculum age which means what? Understood. Now, when you say inoculum size, what does it mean? Concentration of inoculum, so that has to be optimized. Now, secondary metabolite accumulation has been found to be influenced by preliminary treatment. Now, what preliminary treatment? If you remember, I did talk about this that it is very crucial, especially in plant cell technology, that what is the quality of your inoculum. When I say quality of your inoculum, it is not with the size, it is quality of the inoculum refers to, do you, do you agree that quality of inoculum is one of the factors which can be crucial? So, when I say quality of the inoculum, what does it mean irrespective of any kind of fermentation? How fresh the inoculum is? So, which means age of the inoculum, what else? Where do you think your bioprocess efficiency in terms of inoculum quality, how can that be impacted? Inoculum will be, what is the ratio of the most productive cells in your inoculum? So, which means that when you say age of the inoculum and the ratio of the productive cells in the inoculum. So, because always these are mixture of cells. If you take it plant cell fermentations, they are coming from callus which is a heterogeneous mass. So, you need to make sure like synchronous culture. So, when you are preparing the inoculum, you need to make sure that you end up in an inoculum which is of high quality, which means it has the right age and it has the most productive larger amount of the number of cells which are required for the production of that secondary metabolite is higher, the ratio is higher than the other cells. Some cells may be of different size, shape and therefore, metabolic activity. 
Now medium components we have already spoken about the different types of medium components which are required in plant cell fermentations. Now generally medium con conditions which most frequently support when we say secondary metabolites. So generally what is observed that the media components which will support the growth may not be working well for the secondary metabolite yield. So if you need to optimize the medium composition then the medium composition has to be separately optimized for biomass and for the production of the secondary metabolite. Now we will see how the media composition is optimized. When the objective is to optimize for maximum biomass for example. So then how will you find using single factor a range in which you should be optimizing. If suppose the range is not right, what kind of trend will you observe? Hmm? Trend. You are working in a range, so you will see a trend, is not it? What kind of trend can you observe if the range is not right? Continuously decreasing or continuously increasing, so it will be kind of a linear model. So is that the right model for optimization? No. What kind of models will end up in giving you optimum values? So what kind of models? Now convert them into mathematical form. What kind of equations end up in convergence? Your bell shape. So what kind of 2 degree, 3 degree polynomial? They will have a convergence point. Generally you do not have to go beyond that because then it becomes too complicated for optimization and the effect is also not that significant to work with and spend time and uh, media and uh, cost involved in optimization. So you go up till 3 factor level cubic models most crucially impacting your product yield. Now this is what is done in your statistical optimization which you people were talking about. Once you have done your single factor you get the suitable range. So there at least make sure that you end up in seeing increase and decreasing trend bell shape curve and then if you want to optimize it further then you select that range and then use designs which are called as screening designs and then optimization designs using design of experiments. Especially in bioprocess this should be taken up. This is a very useful tool which will end up where which will be used in getting to the optimum parameters in minimum number of experiments possible. And when you do single factor you do not end up in the right optima. Why? Why do you think varying one factor at a time may not give you the right optima? Although you will be able to find a bell, that interaction of so now how do you think your statistical optimization tools will take into account the interactive effect? Okay. Gives a uh, set of experiments uh, varying different. Uh, uh, so a number of recipe can be designed because every factor is varying. So there can be so many permutations. So now, what is the advantage? I said the number of experiments are minimized. So more the number of factors, it will keep on exponentially increasing. So now the help of these tools, these are called as fractional factorial designs. What does that mean? There are full factorial designs as well, but generally to minimize the number of experiments and get to the optimum value you use fractional factorial designs as well. What does it mean? No, no, coming to the design, right now we are designing experiments. So which means that among these 8, there can be different, I am just giving you a small. So now you pick and choose 
the design of experiment tool will pick and choose only some of these design points. Now some of these design points, points will be then given to you and you will be asked to carry out the experiments. Now some of these designs in the range which you have given it will choose depending on the interval there can be so many different recipes. A design can be which chooses only 3 points for a particular variable, a design can be which chooses 5 points for a particular variable in this range. So there are different types of designs depending on the number of data points they choose for every variable and then from there it chooses only set recipes and gives you a design of experiments that which the tool asks you to carry out. Now suppose coming back to a secondary metabolite which is non-growth associated, you will carry out the experiment, what should be your response for every experiment? So your media for biomass, will it be same for the media for your product? Not necessarily. So then how would you know which component is for biomass and which component is for product such that ultimately you end up in maximum product productivity. So therefore you would like to optimize in one go how are your different media components are affecting the biomass and how are your different media components are affecting your product because these may not be directly correlated depending on whether it is growth associated or non-growth associated product formation and also whether there is a need to do biomass separately and this also depends on whether it is extracellular intracellular product formation. Ultimately the goal is productivity. So now coming back to your screening designs. Now first thing is I have some so many different media components, first I need to know before even I come to the optimization part which are the most significant ones. So that I was talking about in the earlier classes that screening designs like Plackett Berman design is most frequently used, you must have heard, you must have seen many papers in literature, what it does connecting it with mathematical modeling, what does it do? these screening designs generally as your experimental recipe is obtained, it depends on certain assumptions. Let us talk about the Plackett Berman which is most frequently used. It is based on the assumption that although there is interaction among the factors, but uh, if there is an interaction between any two factors or three factors, you cannot negate that at least one of them will be having a very significant effect then only their interaction factors are having significant effect, is not it? So and what else that there is factor sparsity which means that the factors which you have chosen are independent factors, they are not compounded which means the one of the component is not affecting, you are not matching pen with pencils here. So these are independent factors, so now with this it takes into account because it assumes that the main effects are the most significant effects and because of these significant effects the interactive effects will gain importance. So it neglects the interactive effect and fits it into a linear model. Linear model means only taking into account the main effects, main effects are the effect of each of your parameters A, B, C, D. And it will ask you to carry out the experiments in the two uh, range which you have given the lower level and the higher level, it will select some of the design points and then you will do the experiment, based on that experiment it will try to fit your response, now your response becomes in that y is equals to mx plus c your response is y, is not it and your factors is x1, x2, x3. Now it will based on the y value, it will based on whatever experiments you have carried out you will get a number of y's for number of x1, x2, x3 function. So you will fit all this in a linear model, polynomial. Based on the fitting and the closeness of the fitting, 
it will do a simple regression analysis and it will fit and it will give you the coefficients of that m, m x plus c was there. Now, this m x can be m 1 x 1 plus m 2 x 2 plus so on. So, it will give you after fitting, fitting is what? Modeling is what? Simple, you began with a simple equation y is equals to m x plus c. You give the data of y and x. You will end up after best fitting, it will give you the value of m and c. Similarly, in the same model, it will give you the values of different m's for different x 1, x 2, is not it? Now, depending on the value of these m's and their signs, what can you make out? Be more clear, suppose you see a positive value of m, what does it mean? Let us talk, she is talking about the sign first, we will not talk about the magnitude. Let us talk about the sign first. A positive coefficient means what? All the time? Be more specific. It is dependent on what? It can only say be more specific that in the range which you have selected as you increase from the lower end to the higher end, it is positively impacting the y can be any response. A negative would mean what? That in the range selected as you are increasing, it is negatively impacting. Now, why this is important in the range selected? This may be a major nutrient like for example, nitrogen. Negative does not mean that you take away nitrogen, make it to 0. It would mean that the amount which you are currently adding or in this range which you have chosen, it can go below the minus 1 which you have chosen or the lowest limit which you have chosen. Ideally, it should be now checked below this minimum range. Understood? Now, talking about the magnitude, what does the magnitude signify? How will it help? in your media optimization. All the factors will be given some sign sub magnitude, is not it? So, now this is this will tell you what? Suppose there were 3 factors, one is minus 5 plus 5 plus 3. What can you do with these values? What can you do with these values with magnitude? Can you not rank them? Rank them for what? Ranking is what now? What was our aim before we began with Plackett Berman? Screening design means what? Not optimization. I said screening design. What does that mean? To choose which one is significant, which one is least significant, which means ranking can be done. Now, for optimization, if there were 16 parameters, 16 components in the media, all 16 will be ranked. So, optimization means all 16 have to be optimized, ideally on paper. But do you think that is worth spending time, money, consumables? Depending on this magnitude and the sign, you can pick the top ranked, which are most significantly affecting your response for further optimization in the range. Now, why do you think further optimization is crucial? Like the values which I gave you minus 5, which means that you need to now see you would rather pick up minus 5 and plus 5 and leave the plus 3, because minus 5 magnitude wise it is more significant, which means the reduction of this component and optimization in a lower range can affect your response much more than with the same change which you would make, can affect your response much more than your plus 3 change, the same change which you would make to plus 3. So, that is what is useful in screening designs. Then you rank them, then you come on to optimization designs. You must have read papers, the most frequently used is your response surface methodology. 
response surface methodology there are a number of tools there one of the tools most frequently used is central composite design you must have heard about box benkum design also so central composite design what does it do or these uh, response surface methodology in general what does it do it will have a number of tools which i was now talking about that between 3 to 5 in that same range which you had given it will pick and choose there can be any number of x and y's not y's x because you have suppose x3 x1 x2 x3 now this x1 between minus 1 and plus 1 can also have a number of data points so now this would choose from 3 to 5 those data points and will give you a recipe again you will carry out experiments and it will try to fit the methodology or the technology is the same it will fit the data in a mod model now what kind of a model preferably a linear model if you end up in a linear model what does it mean what does it mean now you are working with optimization what does it mean that the range which you selected was not right so it has to be a converging point now we do not go beyond with an assumption you will generally see people do not go beyond quadratic and cubic no, no fa 4 factor or 4 degree polynomial or 5 degree polynomial why do you think if you have selected 4, 4 factors from your suppose screening design which were crucial ultimately the interaction can go up to 4 degrees there are a b c d is not it but what is generally done only quadratic effects are taken into account means up to only 2 degrees because the effect it is not that on paper it is wrong but the coefficient which is associated with these now in a polynomial which is a 3 degree polynomial what all different factors you would have you can a quadratic equation for example you will have y is equals to can be mx mx square mx cube if there are two factors can be m x1 x2 m x1 x2 x3 can be m x1 square x2 so on can be uh, such a long polynomial but generally the higher order terms are neglected because their coefficients associated will not be as significantly impacting your response if so then one has to look into the model equation so then thereafter once you fit ANOVA is used for analysis of variance this will tell you that how is the fitting good or not the error once you did the experiment is acceptable or not so that is where your statistics comes into the picture whether to what confidence level you can accept this model if the confidence level is good the model is able to predict the confidence of the prediction by the model is accepted now once you have the model now suppose now model is ready which means now values to the coefficients have been assigned in this polynomial equation this is a model now how do you use this equation to determine the optimum values this is all this we were doing to generate the model is not it now coming on to our ultimate objective I need to optimize now how this model is going to help you to optimize where your in silico approaches help manually it is difficult because it is a polynomial which means now this model can predict for different x1 x2 x3 it can predict a number of y's so now in silico you can generate what a plot with a change in x's how is y changing and if the objective function can be kept as put y maxima and solve this equation to give me the 
value of x1, x2 and x3 for y maxima. We can use a number of mathematical methods, numerical methods are available, is not it. So, the this is what goes on in the background of these tools. You generate contour plots because these are converging. So, in a 3D surface which is called as response surface, you must have uh, seen surfaces coming out 3D surfaces. So, with a change in, so generally when you see contours, it will show you the effect of any two factors, it is a 2D plot. So, it will pick and choose, so now it is the user defined which two factors. Now, how would you define which two factors? You can go back to your screening design and see or in your model which factor coefficient was maximum. Suppose carbon and nitrogen were coming in the top two rank. So, you would try to make a contour plot between carbon and nitrogen which is a 2D plot keeping rest of the factors at their average values and you see how is your response changing and you keep generating these data points. So, in silico what it does is all these data points because this is a converging plot. So, around a circumference whatever is the value of x1, x2, x3 will give you the same response. So, when you keep maximizing it will converge to a single point where your x1 and x2 would be the value a single value which is giving you the maximum y value that is how it is done. So, this is how you will get to the optimum value. Now, in your when you see tools depending on the confidence of your model, they sometimes differentiate the areas of because it is a 3D surface. How will you get to know although I am getting a maxima here, but how do I know that how much is the confidence interval? Although I am getting a maxima here, but my x1, x2 predicted here are falling in a lesser confidence value. So, then I would not pick that, I would rather pick a lower response value where the confidence interval of the model is high. So, that is where you use these 3D surfaces and 3D surfaces they have a color demarcation through which you can the user can know where the model, how is the model confidence varying in different regions of your uh, design space. Okay. So, that is how media optimization or any kind of optimization is done and is useful because in minimum number of experiments you can get to the optima.